Welcome to my channel. My name is Miles and this is my first video. So I'm sorry if the lighting isn't that great. I'm sorry if a lot of things aren't that great. I have never done this before and I love books so I wanted to make a channel and talk about them because all I do is watch book YouTube videos and read and I'm an English major so I really wanted to give it a shot and I got a camera for Christmas so if quality isn't amazing, if sound isn't that great, if lighting isn't that great, if I'm not that great, I'm working on it. But yeah, this is just my first shot at it so I figured I would stop overthinking it and just get to it. So for my first video I wanted to talk about the best and worst books that I read in 2020. I read 60 books in 2020. It was a pretty good reading year for me. So I guess, and I'm gonna put like, I'm gonna put them on one of the sides. I don't have a lot of them on me. A lot of them were borrowed from the library. So yeah, let's get to it. So let's start with my worst books. I read seven books in this category this year. I had a lot of like three star ratings. There were a lot of things that I thought were okay. I just wasn't super passionate about them. But in order for something to be on my worst book of the year list, I need to really dislike it. And a lot of these are unpopular opinions and opinions on books that a lot of people enjoyed. So don't come for me. But this first one is pretty universally disliked and it is Flowers in the Attic. I read it at the beginning of the year, of last year, and I was actually pretty invested in the story. I didn't know why it was so controversial until I got to that part. It was entertaining and like better written than I thought it would be. But, I mean, you can't really excuse that part. It just wasn't... I don't know what I expected. It wasn't well written. It was interesting, but just not good. <laughs> and really uncomfortable at times and like normalized abusive relationships. And I just wasn't into it. So that's Flowers in the Attic. Another book that I read that I wasn't into was Stephen King's Eyes of the Dragon. I am a huge, huge Stephen King fan. Uh, I'm a pretty new fantasy reader and I was really excited to kind of ease into it with an author that I really enjoyed. And it was just so boring. It took me like three months to finish it. It was a pretty short book too. It was only like 300 pages and I just thought it was bad. It was boring. I got interested in like the last 100 pages, maybe. I honestly don't even really remember reading it that much. It was just super boring. The next book that I read that I really didn't like this year was The Woman in Cabin 10. It was just bad. I think, who is it by? I don't know. I just thought it was boring and I was interested in it for a little while and then I don't even remember what the twist was but I just hated it. It was just like, I listened to it on audiobook and it just felt like a big waste of time. I really didn't enjoy it. Sorry, I'm not really describing these books that well. I read them towards the beginning of the year so I don't remember them as well but I just remember being super disappointed by all of them. Next is Convenience Store Woman which I also don't remember the author's name. I did not like this one because, I don't know, I was really excited to read it and I was really interested in the concept of just a normal like day in the life of this like kind of strange woman that is happy living, uh, working at a convenience store and like just that being her whole career and I thought that was really cool and I thought it would really explore like being comfortable and being happy with like quaintness and with simplicity and i was really excited for a book like that because i'm really interested in that concept no it the last part of it after she met that guy i guess this is spoilers sorry i guess spoilers on a lot of the things i'm talking about i'm kind of like not really filtering myself as soon as she met that guy and he was just such a dickhead. 
I just wanted it to be about her. And it was just super disappointing. I think I gave it two stars. I really liked the concept of it, but it just did not live up to what I wanted it to be at all. Disappearance at Devil's Rock by Paul Tremblay. I really like some of Paul Tremblay's works, and I am super bored by some of his other ones. I also read Survivor Song this year and thought it was pretty meh. But Disappearance at Devil's Rock was really interesting for me in the first, like, half and then it just totally fell off at the end. I listened to it all in like one day, so maybe that's my fault, um, not pacing it right. But I just thought the explanation for what happened was weird and like too much and very convoluted. I just didn't really see where it came from and I really wanted it to be something supernatural or be something really creepy and it wasn't. And so it was just disappointing because I was really enjoying like the first third to half of that book. I thought it was really cool. Now we have my controversial picks that like you might be mad at me but this is just how I feel. Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I did not enjoy it. And I know a lot of people enjoyed it. I just thought it was boring and it was just so similar to The Haunting of Hill House, which I love that show and I love that book. It was way too similar. It felt like it borrowed a lot of tropes from it. I don't like how Riley Sager writes women. I thought all the characters were very flat. I haven't read any of his other works, but I'm not really interest that interested in them. I just thought Home Before Dark was very underwhelming, and I thought the ending was dumb. And I know a lot of people liked it, and I know a lot of people put it on like their best books of the year. So I'm sorry. Okay, and then... The book that I, I think I hated the most this year was The Silent Patient. I don't know who it was by. I thought it sucked. I couldn't stand this guy. I thought he was just an asshole. I hated the scenes talking about him smoking weed. I was like, this doesn't make you edgy. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't think it was good. I thought the twist was ridiculous. I don't know. I just... I, it did not blow me away, and when I found out, I've been wanting to read it for a long time. When I found out that it had won the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2019, I think, I was just like, what? For best thriller. And a lot of people loved it, and I was just so underwhelmed. I think I gave it two stars. It just was not, not for me. Also, something that I don't think I mentioned enough of in this book about this writer and about this book is that the way he wrote about women, it's like he had this, like, Madonna whore complex. Like, every woman was either, like, fragile and needed his help, like the other main character, or just a slut. And I... I just... And, you know, maybe that was the point. Maybe he was supposed to be an unlikable main character, and that's why we were supposed to guess the ending. But I just couldn't stand it. Okay, that's all. I needed to elaborate on that. I don't think I expressed why enough that it was my least favorite book of the year. Yeah. Now, my best books of the year. I have 13 books in this category. I think this was the first book I read last year. I gave it four stars, and it was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I just thought it was really sweet, and it was a nice comfort book for me. I really want to go back and read it. It was really my first real classic reading, and I thought it was definitely some parts of it were hard to understand and hard to get through, but I got the audiobook on Audible with Laura Dern. I love Laura Dern. It was great. So that made it a little easier, and it was just, it was a great audiobook. It was just a really fun, comfy, cozy read that I really enjoyed. My next one is The Miseducation of Cameron Post. I think I gave this five stars. I really enjoyed this. I think it's by Emily M. Danforth, I think. She also wrote um, Plain Bad Heroines, which I really, really want to read soon. But I just thought this book was super relatable. I have not been to conversion therapy, but as a like lesbian teenager, I just thought there was a lot 
to um, relate to with Cameron, and she was very, I don't know, she was just very funny and inspiring, and I don't know, I just, I really felt connected to this book, and it might be because this is one of the first books that I read explicitly because it was queer, so it might be like a pretty easy pick for me, just because it was a new thing. But I just thought it was really well written and I really enjoyed it and I just saw a lot of myself in some of the characters. My next book is Bram Stoker's Dracula. I thought this book was great. I read it for the first time when I was in like fourth grade and I was going through my edgy phase like no one understands me, I'm a vampire, you know. I know a lot of it went over my head. and. I'm actually about to reread it for a class that I'm taking next semester on the Victorian period. And I'm really, really excited about that. I just, it was great. I think I gave it four or five stars. I just loved how, like, spooky and gothic and cool it was. And also, like, it felt pretty queer to me. There, there was some, like, sapphic vibes in there. I really enjoyed it, and I read it last winter, and it was just a perfect read for that time. My next book from this list is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I need to reread this because I read it a while ago, so I don't remember it as much as I wanted to. Obviously, this is a super hyped book. You know what it's about. It was so good. It was so beautiful. I don't think I knew before I went into it that it was going to be queer, and it just, like, it was so beautiful. And like, I cried. This was probably one of the books that I cried the most while reading, just because it was lovely. Loved this book. I think I gave it a five out of five. My next book on my list is The Deep by, I think, River Solomon. This was a beautiful, beautiful novella. I listened to it. The narration was great. The audiobook was really good. It took me a while to kind of catch on with what was going on just because they like really throw you right into it. But I thought it was such a beautiful book and it just felt really important to read and I just enjoyed. I really loved it. It was beautiful. How many times can I say beautiful? Next is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This book was so good. I cried so many times when I was reading this book. It was so beautiful. Madeline Miller is, as you'll see, she's on this list again. One of my new favorite authors. I just thought her work is so beautiful and so accessible, which is really nice. I was intimidated going into her books because I thought, like, are these, I don't know, it's Greek mythology, is it going to be too much, will I not understand what's going on? No. It was great. She wrote it so well. I totally understood everything that was going on, and I was so invested in the characters and in the plot. The end. The end destroyed me. It was fantastic. My next book is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by, I think, Ian Reid. It was so... this book fucked with me so bad. Like, I had a panic attack after I finished this book. I was already having a hard day. And this book just, like, sent me over the edge. Which some people might consider a bad thing. And it definitely wasn't a good day. But I really applaud this book for being able to do that. It was really intense. I was super invested in it. The beginning scared the shit out of me. Spoilers for a second, when she's talking about seeing the guy standing in her window and these calls, it really freaked me out. It is like, the way it was described was so creepy and it really unnerved me and it made me super uncomfortable. And the end, I don't know, the end is probably my least favorite part. <laughs> I still gave it five stars because I don't know how he could have ended this and made it like made sense. I, I know it's not for everybody, but I really enjoyed it. My next book is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I thought this was a great, another like Victorian gothic-y book. 
I thought it was great. I really like Shirley Jackson's writing. I want to reread some of her other things that I've read before. I think I would just have a better appreciation for them now. I just thought it was a great book. It was super spooky. You know, a lot of people don't like older um, horror because it's not as scary and there's not any, there's not gore and there's not, I don't know, any of these things that a lot of the other books that I enjoyed this year had. But if you put yourself in the right mindset before you read it and you just, you read it at night in, the, in a dark room with candles lit and it's much scarier and it's super fun and it was just really well written. There's some quotes from this book that will stick with me forever and that I have ju I just love. And I also really like the show. The show is super different, obviously, but I like that. I like the ways they intersect and it was just a beautiful book. I really enjoyed it. My next book is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I think I gave this four stars. It definitely wasn't a perfect book for me, but I was really, really into it. I was really enamored by the plot and I liked the spooky like old house with a bunch of new technology that I didn't understand. So that kind of like made it more spooky and mysterious to me. But I really liked it. I liked our main character. Not against unlikable main characters like in The Silent Patient. I thought the main character in The Turn of the Key is pretty unlikable. I, I liked her perspective though, and I really liked the twist of this. I did not see it coming at all, and it actually made sense. Like, when presented with the evidence, it made sense. That's all I need. That's all I need from a twist. Okay, it's my top four favorite books of the year, and my last one will be my most favorite. The other aren't really in order. My next book is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix, I think. I'm really excited to read more of Grady Hendrix's work. I thought this book was so much fun and I enjoyed it so much. I think I read it in two days. It's a big book. I really want a, a hardcover copy of it because I just thought it was super fun. I really liked the vampire. I really liked how it felt like Dracula, how the structure of the story really followed that. And I just thought it was a great book. It was, I, I was so invested the whole time. I really loved our main character. There were some moments that I, I was listening to the audiobook and I was like, freak, freaked out, which is kind of rare. I don't really get spooked while reading or listening to something that much. But I really liked this one. It was just super fun and I liked how it followed a southern housewife in I think the early 90s and I just really, I don't know, I thought it was a new really fun idea that was like needed in the horror world and I loved it. Okay, my top three. This is going to be in order. My third favorite book of the year was The Troop by Nick Cutter, I think. I loved this book. It was so fucked up. I had a lot of trouble reading it, which you might realize is something that I enjoy. It was just really gross and it has really stuck with me. I read it like a couple weeks ago and oh my god, just thinking about worms. So gross. I really liked the mixed media method that it took and I liked how from the beginning we know that this is gonna be awful. Like we know this can't end well. I love books that start off like that because then you just get to follow the characters on this like path of just... It was great. If you are squeamish or you can't handle bugs or worms or there were a few scenes of like animal harm, which was really hard for me to read. Those were the only parts of the book that I thought were maybe a little unnecessary, like the turtle scene. But I get why it was in there. And I know it's like a survival novel. So it things like that are in, in those kind of books. I thought it was a great book. It was really disturbing. It was really gross. It was really unsettling. 
And I also really liked all the characters. It was so fun, even though it was disgusting, even though it was hard to read. And there were so many moments that genuinely like grossed me out and like disturbed me and scared me. So I have to give it credit for that because a lot of books don't make me feel sick to my stomach in the same way that this did. <laughs> my second favorite book of the year was Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I tried to read the rest of the Southern Reach trilogy and it was not for me. Maybe I'll revisit it one day. But Annihilation was so good. I loved the way it was written. I loved, it really creeped me out. I really liked how cryptic it was and how there's just so much to that we didn't understand about Area X. And I think that's why I didn't like the following books. I finished the second one in the trilogy and I got halfway through the third one before I DNF'd it. I liked how mysterious it was. I liked that we didn't know anything about Area X. And I liked all of the different characters and just, I don't know. I just think the setting of Area X was so good and so spooky. And I love like spooky seaside towns. And I don't know, it was just. Hello, I'm back um, in another day editing and I just feel like I didn't really describe why I loved Annihilation so much. I know that a lot of people didn't get it and a lot of people thought it was the writing was like meandering and weird and vague but I just really liked all of those aspects of it. I thought it was very haunting. I thought the atmosphere was perfect. I thought it described Area X perfectly. I really liked Vandermeer's writing. I thought it was haunting. I thought it was unsettling. I thought it was atmospheric and creepy and also like weirdly uplifting at times. I don't really know how to describe it, but I, it was just a really good book, especially at the time that I read it. And it's definitely one of my favorites of the year. All right. My favorite book of the year was Circe by Madeline Miller. And I know I'm super late to the game on this one. And I know everyone read this like two years ago and loved it. But oh my god, this book was so beautifully written. This is definitely the book that made me cry the most just because of how beautiful it was and how amazing Cersei is. And I don't know, I just, I love it. I love witches. I love, I don't know, I guess I'm really into Greek mythology now. I love Madeline Miller. I think she just took this story and made it something so accessible and so beautiful and so relatable. I just thought Cersei was a, an amazing character and I loved following her for thousands of years. It was such a beautifully written book. I can't really describe my how I loved it, why I loved it so much. It was just everything about it was perfect and the setting was beautiful, and I don't know. <sighs> I need to reread it soon. It was just, it was just so good. I'll think about it forever. Okay, so those were my best and worst books of the year. I know this video was pretty unorganized and I didn't plan for it that much, but I thought I should just sit down and shoot my first video. I hope you guys enjoy. Consider subscribing, liking, commenting down below. I am really excited to be part of the booktube community and I would love to chat with some people. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.